Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome. A few weeks back, a commenter asked about, I, I mentioned Topaz Photo AI, and a commenter uh, asked uh, to hear more about it. Um, and if you haven't heard of this uh, yet, and I think most photographers have, um, it's an all-in-one program from Topaz that does uh, sharpening, noise reduction, and upsizing of images. And previously they'd had each one of those uh, functions in separate pieces of software, so separate, uh, separate plugins, separate software. So Photo AI combines them. Uh, and it can be used either as a standalone program or as Lightroom or Photoshop plugins. So I've been uh, kind of playing around with it and getting mostly good results. So I thought what I'd do is show some images going back to some really old, uh, early uh, images out of digital cameras, So, uh, which I, I luckily still have. But um, have a look and then I'll be back with a follow-up discussion. So there's three ways of opening the Topaz Photo AI uh, plugin in Lightroom. First is to go to the File menu and down to Plugin Extras and select Process with Topaz Photo AI. Uh, the second way is to go to the Photo menu and uh, select Edit in Topaz Photo AI. And then also you can right-click and also choose Edit in Topaz Photo AI. Importantly, if you do choose to edit a uh, RAW file, you get this choice. Either edit a copy or overwrite selected. Uh, I think you always want to edit a copy because uh, this generates a RAW file of over 100 megabytes. So uh, I don't think you want to have your original RAW file ending up that big. So uh, be careful with this. And here is the inter interface that you get. And you can see that you've got uh, a copy of the image uh, on each side. The right side is the processed version. Um, and on the right panel then you can you can actually um, open up the sharpen and the denoise and adjust the strength, uh, essentially taking away control from the autopilot feature. And at the bottom of the control panel you can actually, uh, when you export it or save it to Lightroom, you can use AI to enlarge it. So I have tried the 2x, which gives you a four times larger result because it's two times in each dimension. So here is one of the earliest digital photographs um, that I have. This is Split Rock Lighthouse on the Minnesota shore of Lake Superior. And it was taken with a Canon PowerShot G2. It's all of four megapixels. Here's a crop in on the lighthouse. And yeah, you can see it's not super sharp. I did make uh, an 11 by 14 print uh, from this. It actually looks pretty good. But here it is after running it through Topaz Photo AI. And uh, you can notice it's quite a bit sharper. Also, I enlarged it uh, two times. So it's a four times bigger file. So it's 16 megapixels. Here is a shot of a fox squirrel in our backyard eating some corn uh, that we put out for it. Uh, this was taken with my first digital SLR in EOS uh, 10D, Canon EOS 10D, with the 300 f4 IS uh, L lens. What's interesting is you can see the, uh, the, the squirrel only eats the germ of the kernels and leaves the rest. Here's a crop in on the head of the squirrel. Um, it was a sharp lens, so you can see it's already pretty sharp. And here's a crop of the squirrel's head after processing, so uh, sharpening, noise removal, and I also enlarged it two times, so it actually ends up being a uh, four times larger file, 16 megapixels. I think the results here actually were pretty impressive. So here is an image from a more modern camera. It's the little ZS, the Lumix ZS100 that I have, and uh, image from just this previous October. And zooming in on that uh, maple leaf at uh, top left. By the way, this is a Norway maple, not native to North America, and also invasive. Um, but, you know, this is the unprocessed image. The sharpness is not too shabby, really. And this is after processing, and it sharpens up uh, quite a bit. And it might be a little bit of a loss of fine detail and 
maybe a little bit of artifacting. I, I doubt, which is, I doubt that's going to matter very much, uh, whatever way the file is used. Now, all of the images I've shown so far were uh, edited by simply going to either the Photos uh, menu or right-clicking and uh, choosing Edit in Topaz. However, when you first use the Topaz as a plugin, you get a nag that uh, tells you that you're going to get better results if you uh, edit a RAW file. And uh, so I finally ran into an image, this image, again, with the, taken with the ZS100, where it actually mattered. Here is a crop of the maple leaf at the lower left. Again, a Norway maple, but this isn't a public park, and every maple in the park, except for a few, are Norway maples, so they're not coming down anytime soon because of the invasive problem. But um, again, this one it actually looks a little soft, but when you edit it uh, with the, the Photo AI plugin uh, by, by going to the Photos menu or right-clicking and doing the Edit in Topaz AI, uh, which generates a TIFF file, uh, this image shows some artifacting. And you have to look between the, uh, the middle vein of the leaf and the next vein to the top and actually above that vein as well. This is a bit of weird artifacting around the lighter areas. But if you use the um, raw editing, so going to file and then um, opening it up uh, that way, as I showed previously, you get much better results. There's no artifacting in those light areas. However, it looks like there, uh, there's a hint of sharpening halos along the um, veins of the leaf. So uh, that's something to be aware of. So that's a little bit of uh, my experience with uh, Topaz Photo AI. And the question is, is $200, is it, uh, is it worth it? Um, I think it all depends on what you're doing and, and how much work you're producing. Because the first thing um, that I want to talk about is it's not that fast. Uh, now I'm running a uh, iMac, a 2017 iMac, 27 inch. Core i7 with 40 gigabytes of RAM. It's a pretty fast machine still. And the plugin takes some time to do what it does. I mean, it's the better, I think, the better part of a minute. Uh, I have noticed that uh, it has gotten faster because Topaz seems to regularly update it. And at least as far as the TIFF editing function is uh, concerned, it's gotten faster. The raw editing, uh, when you have to open up a raw, uh, make a copy of a raw and edit that, that's uh, not as fast. And as you saw, for the most part, worked pretty well. Ran into that artifacting problem with uh, leaves. So I think that's something that you need to be aware of and need to be looking at. You know, either use the raw editing or you can, um, you actually, one thing I don't think I mentioned was you can actually um, enlarge the display. So you can go to like 400% and take a look and uh, probably adjust down the sharpening and the noise reduction if you see artifacting if you're using the TIFF function. Other thing is that it generates huge files. So if you edit and use the TIFF editing function, now with the 20 megapixel images from the Lumix ZS100, the TIFF images that it generated were around 95 megabytes. And if you use the raw function, they were about 110 to 112 megabytes. So the question then is, how much storage do you have and are you going to want to save those files? And in general, I have not been saving the files. What I do is I will save them out to a JPEG um, using the export function in Lightroom, and I will actually export them to the folder where the original image is. And then I'll have it re-imported into the catalog. So it'll pop right back into Lightroom and get uh, put into a stack with the original image and the gigantic file as well, which you can then delete if you want to. Um, JPEGs are pretty big too. They're around 15 megabytes. So that that's pretty big. If you have an older camera that's not such very high resolution, as you saw with um, those old Canons um, and the 10D, and then there's people I'm sure that are still using, you know, 6 and 8 and 10 megapixel SLRs, and you can find them used. Um, 
Uh, I think it's worthwhile if you spend $200 and be able to upsize things to comparable to 16 and 20, 24 megapixel uh, cameras of today. The um, noise reduction seems to work pretty well. The um, sharpening, again, uh, just got to be watching out for the artifacts uh, and uh, act accordingly. I think, now I have not really used the uh, plug-in on my Micro Four Thirds images. And honestly, it's not often that I look at those and think they need additional sharpening. Um, remember, the G9 and the G95 have no anti-aliasing filter. So the results are sharp right out of the camera. So I don't really need a whole lot of extra sharpening. As far as noise is concerned, you know, I find up to 1600 ISO with uh, both cameras the noise really isn't an issue and even if you go you can go up to 6400 and they still look pretty good and very frequently um, the only noise reduction you really need to do is in sky areas so you can use the masking function to uh, to only do that on the sky um, so again I think with the larger sensor, sensor cameras uh, all the way up to full frame don't know how much of an advantage this is as far as uh, noise reduction because you know, full frame cameras you can shoot at 12,500 and the noise looks just fine. Um, now the uh, upsizing function, you know, if you're shooting with a 20, so well, let's just say a 16, even going back to 16 megapixels to 20 to 24 megapixel cameras and uh, you've been thinking about springing for a 50 or 60 megapixel camera, you might want to check this out first and see if the results that you get in upsizing to that size file is adequate for what you're doing. It'll save you a heck of a lot of money. Um, and of course the G9 has the um, sensor shift upsizing function in the camera, which I really don't use very often. Uh, it's there if I need it. Uh, if is there a difference i would imagine if you look closely the camera uh, sensor shift method works better but the question is is it really going to matter in the end use as far as speed is concerned uh when i mentioned it being slow you know if you're a volume uh, photographer meaning you're shooting corporate events weddings things like that this isn't really going to work for you um you can queue up images in it. I've done up to three. I don't know what the max is. There has to be some maximum considering the size of the uh, files it generates. Given that it's just not fast um, and those constraints, it's not something you're going to be using when you have a thousand images to work on. And just not. If you're like a fine art photographer, yeah, then, you know, if you're not producing a whole lot of work, probably going to work fine. Anyway, that's it for Topaz Photo AI. If this was useful, informative to you, please hit that like button. If uh, you have any questions or comments or insights or you've found differently from me or things in addition to what I've found, uh, leave a comment below. Uh, that's helpful to everybody. I'm Todd Banner and I will see you next time.